Hey, it's Bridget. I'm going to get on the treadmill. So if you don't like background noise, like a treadmill sound, me walking on the treadmill, skip this video. Okay. I need to get on the treadmill and do a little bit of mileage today because it's the holiday season and I've indulged quite a bit in a lot of sugars and bread and cheese. I, yeah, actually I haven't indulged that much in cheese, but those cheesy potatoes, oh, so good, so good. And I've had some and my belly's not very happy. So I'm trying to get back in my body's good graces <laughs> and walk just a little bit. So I did a mile earlier today. Now I'm gonna do about hopefully another mile here because on the treadmill, just two miles. It's not that much, right? Not that much to ask. So I'll go pretty slow so I can talk and not get winded with you. So today is Christmas day and I've been in a cool space. I've been with my family, actually my two kids, my oldest and my youngest, because my middle two kids went to their dads and my oldest chose not to go to her dad's long story drama filled. And so I've had my two, two of my kids. <laughs> They're probably very much alike and yet very different too, but it's just, it's very interesting to see them both kind of hanging out and we've been watching movies in the living room and putting together Christmas presents. My youngest got a bunch of Lego style toys, but they're mega blocks. And so it's different. It's like um, this whole futuristic army thing, Halo it's called. Some of you might know that if you have kids that are into that. And so my husband's been helping him put together stuff all day long. I, I can't even, in fact, it doesn't even feel like Christmas day right now. It feels like it's been like, five days ago that it was Christmas morning <laughs> morning and we do celebrate Christmas in our house however for me personally especially this year I've really been much more connected to solstice and Yule and nature and the energy of things versus the practicing of a particular faith or path and so just kind of really allowing myself to be moved by whatever I'm feeling connected to or with. And so a lot of my work, I work with multiple deities anyway. So not a mono, um, not like a one God kind of a scenario anyway. So although my family, I'm, I was born and raised Christian and it's particularly Lutheran and my kids are baptized that way. Well, three of my four kids, my fourth kid wasn't baptized that way, but um, his was different. <laughs> he had a different kind of Native American ceremony with a pasture that was actually um, married to a woman. Uh, a woman pastor was married to a woman. So we had a very different, uh, very inclusive ceremony for him when he was born. He's 11 now, so he's in sixth grade. And so different, times are different. Of course, my youngest is with my current husband and I, and then the three older kids are with my ex-husband. So different lifetime, you know? So I've been, but, but leading up to this particular holiday, I've been really connected this week, the week of Christmas, starting on Monday, um, this week, after the solstice and all that kind of settled in, I started really being drawn to the sites that would be considered holy in the Middle East. And, for multiple religions, for Judaism, for Christianity, and for Islam, and specifically related to Israel, Jerusalem, Bethlehem, and such. We know there's a lot of political stuff and people, human, humanity, conflicts, opinions, politics, religion. Oh my goodness, it's got all this. Stuff and I felt very divide, all the divisiveness and the anger, and yet I was drawn to this these places, especially um, the West Bank area and Bethlehem, and doing the walking tours, watching vloggers that do walking tours, and knowing very well that what's happening there is not um, how it's presented often by vloggers and people who are there, religious tourists and such, that many of those perspectives are very 
singular, either whether they're Christianity or they're Muslim based. And I just, I was like really angry for a while and then just frustrated with the divisiveness, feeling exactly how I feel being an American right now, you know? All these stuff until November. I felt really strongly that way. And right now I'm like, oh my goodness, what are we doing to ourselves? Even now as we change and transition and move into hopefully some new hope, era of new hope for 2021. For everyone, wellness, hope, rebuilding. Maybe it's because, maybe I was drawn to that area, what is considered occupied Palestine, or for some of you, Israel. And without getting overtly political about it, I just, I was really drawn to the area and I'm like, oh, and you guys might, may or may not know, but I have channeled Jesus and Mary before in small groups. I don't do it on Above Life channel because that's not the purpose of that channel. Now you could totally argue and say that, well, Jesus and Mother Mary, they're like, rock stars, famous people. I'm like, yeah. And Jesus was a real guy, legit, just so you guys know. But I try to stay away from those kinds of things because of the, obviously, religion and such gets kind of messy for people. It it sparks a lot. It triggers a lot, like it did with me and this week, you know? And to me, it's really not about religion. It's about humanity. How are we treating people? Okay, breathe, Bridget. (laughs) And realizing that my sphere of influence is only within me. That's what it's the strongest, right? Within me, with me. My sphere of influence is with me, with me, with me. So I watch these beautiful walking tours of Bethlehem and the West Bank and just in places in Jerusalem too. I mean... And I've seen before travel vlogs and things of like Church of the Holy Sepulchre and um, the Church of the Nativity, which is in Bethlehem, but the Holy Sepulchre, I think it's Jerusalem, right, you guys? I don't remember exactly, but it's on the other side. Um, at the big wall, you know, that's there. Whew, okay, breathe, Bridget. Whew, breathe, breathe. Because I'm like, what would Jesus say about this? Huh? Jesus I know? Oh, they can even have some things to say. And so I asked today, Christmas Day, I actually felt beautifully relaxed and calm this morning, which was unusual because yesterday I did not feel that way. The day before I did not ever since like Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, 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 Wednesday, I was just Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday into Christmas Eve. I was just, and so I decided to, and I felt so peaceful this morning, Christmas morning. I'm like, oh, Mary, I feel you. I'm a mother. And there's been drama with my kids a little bit, and the big kids and their dad. And it's kind of normal, I guess, for people at the holidays, right? So we gotta have some family drama, even though with the virus situation in the United States, we're not even seeing people, <laughs> really. And yet the kids, they do go back and forth, of course see their parents, me, and then their dad. And she just came through with this incredible piece and I felt her and I appreciated it. And she shared with me her perspective of her life and some pieces of her life and things that I've known before anyway in other interviews I've done with her, but in small groups and stuff, channeling sessions. And you can find the one I did for Mary here on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube. Look for the channeling session with Mary. I did a video of that. I don't know if she's on a playlist. She might be on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel. And so not, 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 um, no contradictions or anything from my initial recorded conversation that you guys have access to with her or anything like that. But some very specific things that my husband's like, yeah, you can't tell people. (laughs) Because I was like, maybe I should read this. Maybe I should read, because I wrote it all down. I sat at the kitchen table and just wrote. And I was talking and he was listening while I was sharing things that were coming through. And 
I was like, I'd laugh about something and say, huh, that makes sense. And I'm thinking, yeah, people would not, I would, I would be burned at a stake, <laughs> you know, if I shared some of that. And I'm like, is that how Jesus felt? Hmm. But then he came in and honored his mother, I was very kind to her. And then he spoke with me a bit too. And I didn't ask him specifically about Israel or occupied Palestine or any of that. I just did, did talk to him a bit about Christianity, about religion in general and all that. And he was so what you'd expect him to be. So just and different teachers have different perspectives, basically is what he said. And it's all about the person that is teaching and how it's coming through them. And the whole goal is understanding for you and how you can apply it to your life. And being able to relate to a father and a son and a mother. And however you choose to relate or connect with the story, whatever religion or faith it's in, because Jesus is in all of those three religions that are there, that are vying for the physical land, wherein the understanding is that that's here, here. So, which I know, I know that, I know all that. The pagan piece surprised me a bit though, a little bit. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm really connected to the elements. I'm really connected to nature right now. He says, you'd be surprised. Miracles, working with the, as an alchemist or working with the elements, is, it's really easy. It's not that difficult. It's not really on long the miraculous vein. <laughs> but at that time, that's what people thought, you know? So it's like, it really wasn't, wasn't that hard, <laughs> you know? Just you have to know how to communicate and connect with things. And he did, so. Anyway, so I am a fan, definitely a fan of Jesus and Mary. And yet, I'm not, I'm not obliged to any one religion. I'm just not. I'm just not. And that's okay. And it's okay for me to say that. It's okay for me to share that. I don't believe in one, only one religion. And I don't believe in one, only one um, way. I just don't. I believe in values and understanding and feeling more a, a connected to one thing versus another based upon where you're at in your life. I believe in that. I also believe that people are really strong in their convictions and fiercely stand up and are triggered deeply by anything that changes or challenges anything that challenges their own personal story. I know that I feel that way. I do. I really do. I feel that way. I know I get super triggered. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. So oh, it's getting warm now. I do have a green hoodie on to keep in the Christmas spirit. Red pants actually right now. So keep in the Christmas spirit here. So I'm walking. Well, this is kind of deep. It's kind of deep. I have a friend of mine that said, oh, I like it when you're on the treadmill. I said, oh. It's been a long time since I've been on the treadmill <laughs> talking, casual, you know. And so I thought, hey, why not, why not share today? I wasn't sure. I mean, I've been trying to take some time off, but it doesn't really work like that. It's not a clear cut and dry for me. I'm constantly open to journaling and connecting and working on myself, too. And there's some big things for the new year. And... I've been, prior to the last two weeks, I was actually working on a class for January, which should still be coming. But this week I just can't. Things that just don't seem deep enough, like for what I'm feeling and understanding and knowing, like the depth of knowledge that I have, it's like, if it's just light on the surface, what's the point? What's the point? Oh, it's like, it's like go deeper, go home, you know? Go deeper, forget about it. You know, don't even try. If you're going to go out for the team and you're going to sit on the bench, why are you there? <laughs> you know, that's how I feel. So, I am by no means perfect. I'm not really even striving for perfection at this point in my life. Mm -mm. I'm just striving for participation, <laughs> showing up, getting better, 
learning, growing, and the connection that I've had this week with the holy places, it's quite beautiful, you know? It's quite beautiful. And I'm appreciative of that. I am. I'm, I'm appreciative of it. And like I said, I know everybody has different views and, and things, and I'm sure that this will stir the pot for some people. And if it does, that's okay, because maybe the pot needs stirring so it will be cleaned up or cleaned out. Or maybe it'll be cleaning my house, get rid of some people that don't really like me anyway. They just watch for, I don't know why. <laughs> it's like, if you don't like me as a person, why are you even watching my videos? <laughs> you know, strange. I don't know. Life is a mystery, isn't it? It's definitely an opportunity for unforeseen things to pop up, bubble up, show up. It's not so much a time of trying to prepare for that. It's a time of just understanding it, just letting it be what it is. Let life be what it is, you know? Let people be who they are. And if you don't like that, who they are, then don't hang around them if you can. Or if it's somebody that's in your family, a loved one, a family member, then just distance yourself as much as you can energetically. Disconnect from whatever is triggering you. Work on your triggers with that person about that situation or circumstance so that it's not a trigger. So that that person or that person's energy isn't controlling you because you're not reacting, because you're not connected to the trigger. Like, that's the point. That's the point. I know because I've been working on it with the big kids situation with their dad. And so that's hard. Anybody that's divorced totally gets how hard that is. I've been divorced for like how many years? 12, 13 years, something like that. And as the kids get older, it doesn't necessarily get easier. Let me just tell you. I thought it would. It gets a little easier in some ways because you definitely are more distanced from that direct contact with that, that ex-person, that spouse, that old spouse, former spouse, former lifetime ago kind of thing. But yet the kids are directly affected and so how they feel affects you, how you feel because you're the mother. This is how I ended up talking to Mary. I was like, oh, thanks, you know. So I hope you're doing well. As good as can be expected. And I'm at 1.7, oops, now it just switched. What am I at? Let's see here. Today I've walked for 38 minutes, 1.739 miles. So I'm gonna let you go, finish my walk, do a little bit of weights over here on the weight bench and maybe go for another Christmas movie. Can never have too many good Christmas movies. So some of the movies I've been watching the last few days are Polar Express, of course. I love that one. I can watch it thousands of times and repeat all the lines. <laughs> Polar Express, Santa Claus the Movie 1, Santa Claus the Movie 2. We watched Santa Claus the Movie 3 today. And yes, I've watched multiple movies. There, it's always going on in the living room. And I, oh, Grinch, watch the Grinch too. And not the cartoon version, the actual version with Jim Carrey in it, that one. And I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, my, my, one of my favorites is Christmas with the Cranks. Christmas with the Cranks. Tim Allen's in that one too. Christmas with the Cranks. So look that up if you haven't watched it. It's funny. It's a good one for, especially for parents who have kids in college or kids that are away from home right now or you're just missing your, your kids. So, because that could have been me. We had a huge snowstorm, a huge blizzard here in Minnesota on the 23rd. And so my kid was stuck two hours away in her little college apartment and all her roommates were there too, the four of them. So they hung out that night and then the next morning when the snowfall stopped but the temperatures plummeted on Christmas Eve, super, super cold, sub-zero wind chill, like negative 35 where she was at, she drove her little piece of crap PT Cruiser home. <laughs> she drove home. It took a long time, it took over three hours, but she drove home. She did it and I was like, oh, I'm glad she didn't call me and say, hey, I'm coming home. 
because I've been freaking out the whole time. And so, but she did, she came home, worked out. But I seriously thought with how much blizzard and the snow and the ice and the cold, I just thought we wouldn't see her until Christmas day. I thought today we maybe would see her maybe because she's also working. So she works a lot and overnights mostly. And so, well, sometimes day, I guess she works all different shifts. And she, I thought we wouldn't see her, but we did. She came. So I thought my holiday was going to be way different, not just because of the virus stuff. It turned out to be okay. It turned out to be okay. A little bit of drama. Okay, a lot of drama with her and her dad, but that's between them. Mary helped me with that. I'm working on it. I'm working on letting go of my trigger. So. <sighs> Do you believe me? I don't know if I believe me 100%, but I, it's, it's a goal. It's a goal for me, okay? It's a goal, it's a goal. I am a work in progress. Like I said, not perfection, just progress, okay? <laughs> and now I'm at 1.8, let me just see the thing switches here. It tells me what incline I'm at, four incline. 1.875 miles. So you take care of you, do what you need to do. Keep yourself sane. Take a break. Try not to be so hard on yourself. That's my goal for 2021 is to be nicer to myself, kinder to me, to me. I've written so much in my journal about that. Nicer thoughts to myself, not so hard on myself. If I don't get something done or if I don't get something up, so what, big deal. You know, it's like, whatever. If it doesn't happen, it's not. I mean, are people gonna die? No, actually, here's a great piece of advice. I had a good friend out of college at one of my first real jobs, and she used to be a 911 dispatcher. So she answered emergency 911 calls, right? And, you know, the police department. And she used to say, in our like little office, she used to say, is anybody gonna die here? It's literally, is anybody gonna die on the phone? They're gonna be mad, they're gonna be upset, they're gonna be sad, they're gonna be whatever, inconvenienced, maybe lose some money. Are they gonna die? No. Okay then, it's fine. That was like her threshold. Is somebody gonna die? No? Okay then, let's act accordingly. Because in her line of work, her perspective was people did die on the phone with her. So I try to remember that. Is anybody gonna die? Really, you might feel awful and crappy, like it's the end of times, but is it really? If it's not, then okay, act accordingly. Good advice. Let's see what I'm at. Let's see what I'm at. Ooh, I'm feeling the calf muscles. 1.953, well, geez, I only have like half a mile here. Let's finish her up together, shall we? I am out of shape too. I used to walk at least three miles a day. It's been a couple of months since I've done that every day steady. I'm just trying to get back into gently some routine and be grateful for what I can do when I do it. So, I mean, I'm getting a little puffy, puffy around the middle, a little squishy. I don't necessarily like it, but that's what happens when you let other things control our choices, that's what happens, right? We don't always like how things are going. So things that we do have control over, it's in here, right? It's in here, right? We gotta grab that power back. Grab it back. 1.92, see, 1.994, 1.995. Now it switches and it tells me how fast I'm going how much I've walked, 44 minutes today, two, two miles, yes, 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 yes. Okay, now I gotta go lift some weights. All right, thanks so much for being here. I hope I've inspired your spirit, filled you with hope. Remember, no matter what I say or what I share, the important part is you. It's your life. No matter what I say, do, or don't say, or don't do, this is your life. It's yours now. So live it. Just live it. That's the best we can do. Thanks for being here. Have a good day.